Hi, I'm Joey Mariano, I'm with eGeniuses, and today I'm going to be unboxing the Sony TX9. And today I'm going to be comparing this with the TX1. I'm going to also compare it with uh, the Canon 30D and the video from this one compared with a uh, Canon HV20 and a Kodak ZIA. So this is it. Let's go ahead and open it up. It's a 12.2 megapixel camera. It has a 3.5 inch screen. Let's see how it looks. And let's see, hope you can see this. Here's a camera. Looks pretty cool. Alright, so there's that. Comes with a charger, wall charger. Lithium ion battery, very small, thin. Um, I guess this is for drawing on the screen, if you want to do that. What else is in here? Hand strap, definitely useful. Um, this looks like a uh, RCA output cable connected to your TV. So I think they sell a separate uh, cable that will allow you to output in HD uh, via HDMI, but that's an extra accessory. And this is a USB cable to plug it into your computer to transfer. Oh wow. It comes with a dock. Wow, that's pretty cool actually. I guess you don't need that extra cable if you use this because this comes with um, DC in, which, okay, which I guess you have to get something else for. Um, a regular HDMI cable and the USB and audio video out. So I'm hoping and I'm assuming that you just pop this in here somehow. Yeah. Pop this in here, and I'm hoping that you can output HDMI to your TV. So we'll see how this works. Oh, I need the battery in here. Do you want to zoom in a little bit? Just to make sure you can see this and get this stuff out of the way. Get all this out of the way too. All right, so the cool thing about this is that not only does it take Sony's proprietary memory stick, but it'll also take a regular SD card. So I got one of these um, Transcend SDHC 16 gigabyte cards and that can pop right in here. I never liked those pro proprietary type of things because you know, if you want to use the memory stick somewhere else, you know, if it's a memory stick, Sony memory stick, you have to get all kinds of Sony products in order for it to work. So there we go, pop that in there real easy. Let's see, so right now this is going for $3.99 on Sony's website see how it looks. So I turned it on, makes a cool little sound here. And um, let's take a look at some of the features here. So, let's see. Intelligent auto adjustment. This is just um, one of the modes that's supposed to make it very easy. If you're just somebody who wants to take a quick picture, you can either use intelligent auto adjustment or superior auto adjustment, and it'll automatically adjust the scene um, eye sweep panorama. This is a very nice screen, by the way. Eye sweep panorama. Um, basically, you go like this, pan around, and it'll automatically stitch them together right here on the camera. You don't have to do any extra work. So that's kind of cool. Um, movie mode. Uh, the video mode is. Full HD 1920 by 1080 HD at um, 60i AV8 AVC HD format. So you can also record in different formats. 
but this one is uncompressed. It's supposed to be uh, clearer, um, and the colors are supposed to be better. So the main thing about this camera, though, is the 3D feature. If you have a if you have a 3D TV, 3D capable TV, you can actually take a picture here. Um, it only has one lens, but it somehow can do it by doing the sweep motion, and it'll detect the different angles. You can also view it from the camera here, so it's kind of cool. Let's let's do this real quick. You can see what I have set up. All right, so I don't know if you can see this here, but it's processing. And then I'm going to go ahead and view the picture. You see this right here? You kind of get an effect of how it looks. So even if you don't have a 3D TV, you can utilize some of these features. I guess what I want to do right now is I want to compare this with the um, with the old TX1. So I have the old TX1 here, and. TX1, the original one's a little bit thinner. This was also a very good camera. The screen is smaller on the TX1. It's a three inch screen as opposed to a 3.5 inch screen with the, the TX9. It didn't take SDHC cards. It still had some of the cool modes where you could do a sweep panorama. The panorama was only 185 degrees as opposed to 258 degrees with the TX9. It had the anti-motion blur which comes in, comes in real handy because a lot of times you don't want to use the flash because it'll take away from uh, the feel of the scene. So you can actually take a picture with these and it'll actually take about six shots I believe. So, you know, right, one, one right after the other and then it'll, um, it'll merge them together. So let's see if you, if you can hear this. So it just took a couple shots, stitches them together, and you have a picture that is not blurry. So that also works the same in uh, twilight mode. So you can take a picture at night, not have to use the, the flash, and the, the picture will be blurry. Um, now, a few other features that this new TX9 has is um, a background defocus. So I'm gonna be comparing that with an actual DSLR camera with a 50 millimeter, 50 millimeter lens and we'll see the difference and we'll see how this actually compares to the real thing. So the whole idea is when you take a picture with a, uh, an SLR camera, something with a big lens and a big sensor, um, what you'll notice is when you take a close shot, you'll have a shallow depth of field and so the image that you're trying to take a picture of will be in focus while the background kind of is uh, blurred. Uh, you can't usually do the, that with these types of cameras because the lens is small, the sensor is usually small, so you kind of have to use some trickery to make it happen. It has an HDR mode, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to show you some comparison shots between um, you know, shooting regular mode versus HDR, which is high dynamic range. And the whole point is you're supposed to be able to capture the, like, the dark shadows and the highlights. Usually you can't can't do that, a normal camera can't do that. Your eyes can do it because they adjust automatically based on how much light is coming through. So when you actually look at something, you're seeing it in a wider range than what you see in the camera. So what this does is it takes two pictures at different um, exposures and then it combines the best from both of them. So you get the darks from one, from the darker one, and the highlights from the lighter one, and you're supposed to be able to get a better picture. And we'll also be comparing the video between the TX9, the Canon HV20, as well as the ZI8. Okay, this is a test with the Canon HV20. It also has optical image stabilization, a CMOS sensor, and I'm panning around, I'm holding it by hand to give you an idea of the image quality. I'm also using an external road mic 
so the sound might not be very good because it is supposed to be a directional mic but this will give you an idea to compare the image quality okay this is a test of the Sony TX9 video I am shooting in MPEG-4 format it has an optical stabilizer with this Carl Zeiss lens and so you can see the movement I am now filming with a Kodak ZI8 going to pan around and you can compare the image quality All right. so far I like the way this feels Feel, it feels very solid you know all the buttons are in the right place the touch screen I'm not sure if I'm used to yet um, I've actually ordered another um, there, another new camera, the um, WX5, and it has you know more physical controls, um, actual hard buttons, and so we'll see which one's better. I'll be doing a review about uh, that camera pretty soon. So so far I like this, very intuitive. Um, the touch screen is great. The screen quality is terrific. Um, we'll have to see how the pictures come out.